Hi, I'm Lambros Tapinos, Mayor of the City of Moreland. Today I'm going to be speaking through some of the key aspects of Council's proposed budget, which is out now for community consultation. This will hopefully help you be able to make an informed submission on the budget for 2020 2021, as well as our rating strategy, strategic resource plan, and our proposed fees and charges schedule. Before I start, I have to acknowledge the significant impact coronavirus has had on our community and Council's proposed budget. The coronavirus pandemic has brought about unprecedented challenges to our community. Experts are telling us that we are entering the worst recession since the Great Depression in the 1930s. We don't yet understand the full impacts of the pandemic, but our strong financial management has enabled us to respond to the community's immediate needs. We will be able to continue to respond effectively in the coming months. At the onset of this crisis, Council acted quickly in adopting a relief package for the Moreland community, which sought to assist our residents and businesses through these difficult times. To help the community further during this tough time, we've proposed an additional $1.2 million for recovery and rebuild. This is in addition to the hardship and community relief measures adopted at the Special Council meeting in March 2020, which included a coronavirus financial hardship policy, rent relief, waiving food registration renewal fees for the 2020 financial year. To start with, I'll give you an overview of Council's financial position, where we get our money from, and a general overview of where we propose to spend it. Our primary source of income is rates and charges, which makes up 76% of our income. Operating grants are the next highest, comprising 7% of total income. Council is limited in its ability to increase its revenue and has to work within limited resources to deliver services and to maintain community infrastructure. The fair go rate system controlled by the state government limits the total amount a council can increase its rates each year. This is based on the amount it levied in the previous year. The proposed rate increase this budget is 2%, which is in line with the fair go rates system. We have proposed a $209 charge per year for an 80 litre waste bin. This is a reduction of $4 on the annual charge. The annual waste fees are directly linked to the cost of providing the waste services on a cost recovery basis. So this takes me to where we propose to spend our money. Council's largest source of expenditure is employee costs at 50%. Many council services are delivered through our workforce and these costs increase through the enterprise bargaining agreement, which is set outside of the budget process. Reducing employee costs will mean a reduction in council services to the community. We also propose to spend 34% of our income on materials and services, which include cleaning and waste removal, utilities, building consultants and contractors. Basic indexation for materials and services has been set at 1% per annum. This is below the CPI increase. We are committed to finding efficiencies to continue delivering council services without seeking an exemption from the rate cap. As you can see here, we also have great initiatives that we propose to achieve in the next year. Environmental sustainability is really important. We are proposing to spend $1 million on our Towards Zero Waste Food Program, $800,000 on our Zero Carbon Moreland Action Plan, $500,000 to plant new trees. We are also committed to improving the well-being of our community through investment in social cohesion and our sporting clubs through sports design grants. We are also proposing new initiatives to expand our maternal child health services and youth services. We have proposed $32,000 to go towards introducing new appointment times once a month on a Saturday for maternal child health. This will create more flexibility for working families. For youth services, we have proposed $180,000 towards implementing the new youth services strategy. This includes establishing a new program which will enable young people to have genuine opportunities to influence council decision making and lead projects. 
young people will be recognised for their time and valuable contribution through honorary payments. We have also planned to do outreach of youth services in the north, including Glenroy and Faulkner. The proposed 2020-21 annual budget delivers an operating surplus of $26.7 million to meet the following requirements. 1.2 million in loan principal repayments. 1.9 million transferred to the defined benefit scheme reserve. This continues the process of replenishing the cash reserve that were used to repay the defined benefit liability in August 2013 and to see and restore council's liquidity. And 1.5 million in additional rates funded capital expenditure beyond depreciation recognising our commitment to gradually closing the renewal backlog that Council faces. $5 million transfer to reserves to repay Council's interest only loans when they mature and fund Council's other significant capital projects being delivered in the next five years. I'd now like to take you through our proposed Capital Works program and the key highlights. Capital Works is a large part of Council's budget process and we are proud to be delivering one of our biggest Capital Works programs in 2021. As you can see, our Capital Works program is funded through a mix of Council rates, reserves, borrowings and grants. It is largely funded by rates income and ultimately Council's surplus. There are many highlights of our Capital Works program, which includes $27.6 million for buildings, $9.2 million for roads, $8.6 million for our parks and open spaces, and $1.3 million for transport management. One of the projects which I'm really excited about is the Wheat Chief Community Hub for Glenroy. This is a $30 million investment for the Council, with $16 million allocated in the next financial year. We have secured a $9.5 million discounted loan through the State Government's Go Community Infrastructure Loan Scheme. The State Government funds half the interest costs, which will save ratepayers significant financing costs into the future. The new Community Hub for Glenroy will contain maternal and child health care services, kindergarten and long day care services, a modern library, community meeting rooms, a community health service, neighbourhood learning centre and a community garden. This hub will really enhance liveability and wellbeing for our 34,000 residents in the north. We are also proud that the community hub will also have world-leading sustainable design. We are also committed to improving the health and wellbeing of Moreland residents by providing high quality recreation facilities. In this budget, we have proposed $2 million to improve the Coburg Leisure Centre, $3.2 million for bicycle paths and $600,000 to renovate the Gillen Reserve Pavilion. This proposed investment will help our residents get out there and stay active. In this draft budget, we have also proposed $3.2 million for next financial year to go towards the Park Close to Home project. This project is designed to increase the number of parks in dense urban areas. This will help prepare our city and community for Moreland's projected population growth by providing more enjoyable open spaces for everyone. The first two new parks will be completed in August 2020, one in West Street, Brunswick and the other in Tinning Street, Brunswick. I hope this presentation helps highlight some of the key aspects of our proposed budget for 2020-2021. We encourage you to make a submission to let us know what you think about this proposed budget. You can make a submission online or via post before the 11th of June. A submission doesn't have to be in any format, but you can have a think about what you agree with, what you disagree with, and the reasons for doing so. If you would like something funded which is currently not included, let us know what are the community benefits. If you would like to speak to your submission, also let us know. Council will hear submissions on the 15th of June. If you wish to speak, you may do so. Once we hear these submissions, then we will incorporate any changes and adopt the final budget on the 8th of July. That's all from me. 
I look forward to hearing your submissions.